Hi, this is Mrs. Espeset, and today we're going to talk about two of the first English colonies in North America. So there were many colonies in, in the Americas, the Dutch being one of them, but we're looking at the first two of the English colonies, and that is Jamestown Colony, founded in 1607, and the Plymouth Colony, founded in 1620. So let's get started with Jamestown, uh, May 14th, 1607. About 500 members founded the first permanent English settlement in North America uh, on the banks of the James River uh, in Chesapeake Bay. And here is a picture of the first settlement. And notice it's in a, uh, the fort's in a triangle. And in the center is a storehouse for weapons and other supplies, a church, and then on the outside uh, are houses. So let's start with uh, the problems that Jamestown had, and boy, did they have a lot of problems. One, uh, they didn't bring enough supplies, and the reason they didn't bring enough supplies is because their ships were not big enough. And, and you've got to remember that the sailors that are bringing the, the colonists over uh, had to think about having supplies to get back to England. So uh, they were definitely undersupplied. Um, they were city dwellers. They didn't know how to live off the land. That's the second one. Uh, third, famine. They were actually starving to death. And they were starving to death because they didn't know how to grow crops. They didn't know how to fish. They didn't know how to hunt. And in fact, the first winter was so bad, they called it the starving time. And they figure uh, about uh, almost 80% uh, died that first winter. And, and the colonists were so desperate. They were eating their pets. They were eating shoe leather. They even tried uh, to eat uh, the dead, which, ugh. Um, John, it was John Smith. John Smith convinced the people that they would have to work if they were going to survive. Uh, number four is drought. Uh, it was, uh, the area saw the worst drought in 800 years, which makes it difficult to grow crops because it's not raining as often. Also, the water wasn't as fresh, which leads me to number five, uh, which was disease and uh, diseases like typhoid and dysentery, uh, which were caused by drinking uh, dirty water. It gave the colonists really bad uh, diarrhea and then they would throw up and, and get sick and they would be so dehydrated that they'd actually die from it. And the last reason was conflicts with Native Americans and the settlers, the colonists, actually kind of provoked uh, some of the problems un unmeaningly. Uh, they were uh, so desperate to eat, they were stealing corn, uh, and they were doing things that just made the Native Americans uh, not so happy. Uh, there was an Algonquin chief uh, who just constantly uh, saw the colonists as a complete pain and kept wondering, you know, how do I deal with these people? Luckily, it was John Smith who was able to make peace with the tribe. And, and in the end, they were able to um, trade uh, beads and corn and weapons. And it, it actually helped uh, the colonists uh, survive. Okay, things got so bad that by 1610, uh, colonists were ready to quit. They wanted, they wanted to uh, go back to England. They just said, this is not going to work. What changed everything? What kind of became the catalyst uh, for, for Jamestown to turn around was uh, two ships. Two ships arrived with new settlers, new supplies, and, and it was just the boost that Jamestown needed um, to get back on their feet and, and get going. So that was uh, very important to the colonists at Jamestown. So uh, the colony does begin to grow and prosper. 
And the reason it's able to grow are a few things. One, a, uh, a man named Sir Thomas Gates arrives and he issues a system of new laws and he makes sure that the colonists and the Algonquins uh, kind of uh, adhere to a strict policy. Uh, and by doing that, uh, he stops the, the animosity between the two groups. Uh, he takes a hard line with a couple of the other Native American villages, and he even actually encourages the settlers to attack and kill Native Americans, uh, burning their houses and their crops. <clears throat> uh, the English also started to build uh, forts, and they built the forts rather closely together, maybe like an hour or two hour uh, run from each other so that so that the colonists in case of a native attack could get to a safe place. Um, they also um, learned how to insulate their dwellings to keep them warmer. Uh, but really kind of uh, the peace that was created between the native and the American, sorry, the peace that was created by the English and the Native Americans was when John Rolfe married Pocahontas in 1614. This made the two groups of people uh, work together. Also, uh, the colonists established a representative government, and this is important to us because uh, it sort of becomes a model for other colonies and it is sort of one of the predecessors of the government that we use today. And finally, John Rolfe wanted to grow tobacco and tobacco becomes very profitable and it makes Jamestown very rich. And the tobacco came from the West Indies and John Rolfe saw how much money was being made in the West Indies and he thought, hey, why can't we do that in Jamestown? And tobacco becomes such a profitable crop that there are um, stories that the tobacco was even grown like kind of on the sides of the, of the streets and in between everyone's yard uh, because, because they were making so much money from tobacco. And so because of that, within five years, Jamestown becomes very successful and they, and they do make lots of money. All right, so let's move on to Plymouth Colony. And Plymouth Colony was started in September of 1620. And they arrived uh, from England on the Mayflower. And there were um, some of them were part of a radical religious group known as the English separatists. And they came to um, America because they wanted uh, religious freedom. They were looking to be able to do their uh, <clears throat> religion in peace. And so they were hoping that by coming to Plymouth, uh, they would have religious freedom. They arrived uh, at Cape Cod which is in present-day Massachusetts, and they named the area the Plymouth Rock, and you might have seen the cartoon. I certainly have a million times. Anyway, it became uh, a settlement, and notice here is a picture of the settlement. Uh, same kind of um, sort of typical layout as we saw in Jamestown. The shape's a little different, but notice you know, in the center, you've got a church and you've got a supply area and then all the houses are built around it. And uh, these, this is a little bit bigger because here you see they actually have this little farm area, a place to grow crops within, within the walls of the fort. Just like Jamestown, uh, Plymouth does run into some of the same problems, uh, them being not enough supplies for the same reason, uh, just not enough ships, couldn't afford to bring enough ships, couldn't afford um, <clears throat> to get enough of the supplies. And of course the ships were not big enough. Uh, and again, people didn't know how to live off the land. They were city dwellers. And uh, again, disease, that, that uh, typhoid, dysentery, cholera, uh, and they just didn't understand 
uh, they needed clean drinking water. More than half the settlers fell ill that first winter. And in fact, 78% of all the women that were at Plymouth uh, died that first winter. <clears throat> now things were a little different for Plymouth and that is they befriended the Indians. And so uh, they befriended a, a man named Squanto and he had uh, actually been taken at Jamestown and uh, was um, went to England, learned to speak English, came back. So he was able to communicate uh, with the English. And so he became kind of a guide and he became kind of um, a mediary between the natives and, and the English. And so they uh, had kind of a nice relationship. So in, in 1621, uh, Plymouth hosted the very first Thanksgiving uh, and uh, they were celebrating the fact that the Native Americans had taught the English how to plant corn, where to fish, how to hunt beaver, and really the Native Americans uh, were a very important part of Plymouth's survival. So anyway, the Thanksgiving lasted about three days. Uh, people ate venison, which is deer meat, if you didn't know that, chestnuts, cranberries, garlic, artichokes, and maybe turkey. Turkeys were there, so it's very possible that they ate them. Uh, but the people played games and, and showed off military uh, exercises. Uh, so uh, a good time was had by all. <clears throat> After the first year, Plymouth Colony uh, was able to kind of get back on their feet. And really, again, it is because of the Native Americans. Um, but, but really what, what makes Plymouth take off are two different things. And one of them is the Mayflower Compact. And, and the Mayflower Compact is a little misleading. It, it was a document that was written while most of the English colonists were still actually on the ship, the Mayflower, and that's why they called it that. And it kind of became uh, obvious that the English were going to need to have some kind of law, um, some kind of government. And so they all sat down and they wrote out a set of laws and, and then they all signed it. And that Mayflower Compact uh, is really important to us today and we're going to see it a little bit later because again it's sort of a um, one of the four um, documents uh, that that kind of is based on the Declaration of Independence. The other thing uh, that makes Plymouth successful is Governor William Bradford and he did kind of a lot of things. One, he, he helped create uh, Plymouth's kind of legal government uh, above and beyond the Mayflower Compact, uh, but he also helped create a community focused on religious tolerance and he encouraged a, an economy uh, centered on uh, private farms. And, and though uh, Plymouth would never make a lot of money, the settlement was able to take care of itself by growing its own food, uh, fishing, and trading with others. And, and so even though it never made the money that Jamestown did, uh, it was still considered sex <laughs> successful. All right, you guys. Have a good one. If you have any questions, email me, remind, um, canvas, comments, or, or head it to my office hours. Thanks so much. Have a good day.